Hello, my name is Edgar Palacios, and I am the data scientist here at ULAP. And in this video, I'll be covering the deployment of open source LLMs within our inference engine. Uh, before we get into the meat of the video, I'd like to start by giving a brief uh, introduction to the application. Um, so the inference engine is a solution that we purposely built to empower data scientists as well as analysts to take complete advantage of the models that they've been working hard to develop. And it does this by providing a platform that allows for quick deployment of machine learning as well as deep learning models that is automatically configured to support scaling. So there's no need to understand the cloud uh, or depend on DevOps and MLOps teams to set up and configure the environments that you might need. This ultimately translates to faster time to production. There's less headache for the data scientists as well as the analysts, as well as lower costs and increased team output overall. So now that uh, we've gone over the inference engine intro, uh, we'll continue by going over the inference engine UI. So what you see here is the homepage and there are two key tables here. The first is the registered models table, which contains all the models that have been published and are ready to be deployed. And these can be models that you've published yourself or users from your team have published. The second table um, that we have here is a deployments table. And these are models that are currently deployed. So right now we have two. One is called DNS Anomaly. The other is Falcon 7D which I'll be using later in this demo. The next page that I would like to go over is the predict page. So once having deployed your model, it's important to test it before you put it into production. So this page helps you do that quickly by first allowing you to select a model from this dropdown list. Then you can select your inference input. Uh, in this case, it's a JSON file and it contains a list uh, with your inputs to your model. So once that model is selected and we have our payload, we can just click predict and we should see an output for that prediction down here. And that magic I'll save for um, later on in the video. The next section or the next page that I uh, would like to go over here is the monitoring page. So here the user is presented with information on deployment, such as the CPU usage, memory and network. Uh, data associated with each deployment. So for example, here in the services table, we see there are two services. Uh, these are the two models that I mentioned earlier that were deployed. So we'll go ahead and click on Falcon 7B for this demo, just to keep things consistent. And if I scroll down, I am presented with three graphs here. So this is CPU, memory, and network time series graphs, where you can see spikes in usage. So this is nice to understand when the model might be used. Like let's say you're having this model run 24 seven, but also um, it becomes very important specific, specifically when you start to optimize the performance of your model. For example, if you don't, under, if you don't know uh, the optimal requirements or hardware requirements for your model, you can deploy it, take a look at this page and you can start to identify if there are bottlenecks. So you'll, you might see, for example, uh, your CPU usage as at 100% for uh, a prolonged period of time, which is an indication that maybe uh, there is a necessity for a higher performance CPU. So now that I've gone over the components of the UI, we can get into the demonstration. So the model that I'll be using here is Falcon 7D. This is an open source model that's available on Hugging Face that was built by Technology Innovation Institute. Um, it was trained, I believe, on 1,500 billion tokens of refined web data, and, the, and this is a curated corpora. Now, this model is often compared to earlier versions of GPT, but has been found to be more suited for conversation or interactions, whereas GPT is better at providing specific informations or explanations. So assuming that we've already prepared our model by creating the necessary files, and this includes the archive file, the config file, as well as the handler file, we'll go ahead and test the inference service. Uh, to do that, we'll navigate to this page where, it's, where it says predict. Uh, we'll select the model here, Falcon 7B, and then we'll pass in the payload. So this payload, uh, in this case, the question is, uh, what is DNS? So we'll go ahead and click predict. So while this response is being generated uh, right now, it'd be a good time to explain what is occurring. 
that will influence this response latency. So basically when you click predict, you're sending a payload with your input to the inference server. Uh, that inference server then processes that input according to your handler file, and then finally generates a response for you. Uh, once that response is generated, it's then sent back through the API and then displayed in this UI here. And here's our response. So <clears throat> the answer according to the Falcon 7D model is that DNS stands for domain name system. And it's a hierarchical distributed system that translates human readable domain names into IP addresses, which are used to locate computers and other resources on the internet. So it's a pretty simple uh, question. So we'll go ahead and give it uh, a little bit more complex question. In this case, this question is, how can we use DNS to identify network threats? So we'll go ahead and click predict. And according to the model, the answer to the question of how we can use DNS logs to identify network threats is DNS logs can be used to identify threats by monitoring for suspicious activity or abnormal behavior. This can include monitoring for DNS queries that are not legitimate or are from suspicious IP addresses. Additionally, DNS logs can be used to track the origin of malicious traffic and identify potential attackers. And it's important to regularly review DNS and implement DNS logs and implement security measures to prevent and mitigate potential threats. So overall, it's quite a good response considering that it is a pre-trained model. One thing to note is that, like I said, these are pre-trained models, but these are models, but these models can also be fine-tuned for particular applications. So if you wanted a custom version of this LLM for your use case then you would just take this pre-trained model, fine tune it on your data set, and then you can deploy it uh, using this uh, inference engine, the, the same exact way that you would deploy this model. One other important thing to note is that the inference engine is not only available to host or serve LLMs. Uh, the inference engine is actually ML and deep learning framework agnostic. And currently we support all major frameworks, which include scikit-learn, XGBoost, TensorFlow, as well as PyTorch. So now that I've shown how to actually use the inference service, I'm going to show how we can actually spin this service down and then we'll redeploy it. So you can see how easy that step is. So. To do that, we'll have to navigate to the deploy section. Then we'll go ahead and select Falcon 7D and it's as easy as clicking delete. So we get our confirmation there. And if we go ahead and refresh this, we should see that um, our Falcon 7D status is now missing. And this indicates that the Falcon 7D model is now, the service is now being spun down. Depending on the size of the model, this particular step can take a couple of minutes. I'll go ahead and refresh this to see if it's been completely removed. And yes, it has. So now that that uh, model deployment has been removed, we'll go ahead and redeploy it. Uh, and all we have to do is go to click deploy server. In this case, we'll call it Falcon 7D. We select our model. We then go to the advanced section here. In this case, I'll set it up with um, eight CPUs and we'll allocate 100 gigabytes of RAM to this model. Also, we have to select our nodes. In this case, we have a special node a, a scaled up for this particular demonstration that we call Alex and Falcon. We'll save these. Now that this is ready, all we have to do is click deploy. And there is our confirmation. We'll see that initially the status is missing, but uh, once we refresh this, we should be able to see that it is progressing. So this indicates uh, that um, the model service is being deployed. And essentially what is happening here is the inference service will look to S3, fetch the files, uh, load them into the server, and then deploy your service. So this can take, you know, uh, it can be a few seconds or it can take several minutes depending on the size of the model. In the case of these LLMs, because these are tens of gigabytes, um, you should expect to see maybe a few minutes uh, for all of this to actually go through. So we'll give it some time here. So after some time, we'll go ahead and refresh and we should see a change in the status. And there we go. So our Falcon 7D model is now running 
and ready for us to start uh, sending inference requests. And with that, uh, we conclude this video demonstration on how to deploy and operate your LLMs and ELEPS inference engine. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback uh, about any of this or any of the other product offerings that can support data science workflow, please do not hesitate to reach out on LinkedIn or YouTube. Thank you for your attention and till then.